Misinformation spreads like a virus, and conspiracy theories are especially contagious. We stop misinformation from spreading through inoculation. Understanding the techniques used to deceive protects you from being misled. There are seven techniques found in conspiracy theories, seven traits of conspiratorial thinking. Learning these traits helps us spot the red flags of a baseless conspiracy theory. The video Plandemic is an interview with conspiracy theorist Judy Mikovits. She's a former researcher who had a study retracted because her data was contaminated and no one, including herself, could replicate the results. She was subsequently charged with theft, allegedly stealing equipment and data from her lab. Plandemic is a textbook example of conspiratorial thinking. And so it's instructive looking at examples from this video. By examining the seven traits of conspiratorial thinking found in Plandemic, it can help build our resilience so we're not misled by other conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theorists are so committed to disbelieving an official account, it doesn't matter if their belief system is contradictory. Like other COVID conspiracy theorists, Mikovits believes that COVID-19 originated from a lab in Wuhan, although she expands this theory to include US labs. I'm sure it occurred between the North Carolina laboratories, Fort Detrick, US Army Research Institute of Infectious Disease, and the Wuhan laboratory. But she also believes that everyone already has the novel coronavirus and that wearing masks activates it. Coronaviruses are in every animal. So if you've ever had a flu vaccine, you were injected with coronaviruses. And then to put on a mask. This doesn't make any sense. We wear masks in an acute setting to protect us. We're not wearing masks. Wearing the mask literally activates your own virus. You're getting sick from your own reactivated coronavirus expressions. And if it happens to be SARS-CoV-2, then you've got a big problem. The idea that we're all infected with COVID-19, which activates by wearing masks, is wrong for so many reasons. First, it plagiarizes the walking dead. We're all infected. Second, it fails to explain how the virus spread so quickly through the US before people started wearing masks. And third, which is it? Did it come from a Wuhan lab or are we already infected? Mikovits is trying to have her COVID cake and eat it too. Conspiracy theorists are overwhelmingly suspicious towards the official account. That means any scientific evidence that doesn't fit into the conspiracy theory must be faked. Why would they want to skew the number of deaths due to COVID-19? Well, fear is a great way to control people. And sometimes people's ability to think for themselves is paralyzed if they're frightened enough. But if you think the scientific data is fact, that takes you down the rabbit hole of believing that any scientific organization endorsing or publishing research consistent with the official account must be in on the conspiracy. And not just the WHO, not just the WHO, the FDA, the CDC, Tony Fauci, close everything. In other words, any group or person who actually knows anything about science is part of the conspiracy. But why stop there? The mainstream media is also part of the conspiracy, including, apparently, late-night comedians. In a conspiracy theory, the conspirators are assumed to have nefarious motives. In the case of Plandemic, there's no limit to the nefarious intent, which involves killing millions of people for billions of dollars of profit. If we activate mandatory vaccines globally, I imagine these people stand to make hundreds of billions of dollars that own the vaccines. And they'll kill millions, as they already have with their vaccines. Although conspiracy theorists may occasionally abandon specific ideas when they become untenable, those revisions don't change their overall conclusion that something must be wrong and that the official account is based on deception. So does the filmmaker behind Pandemic, Mickey Willis, really believe that COVID-19 was intentionally started so someone could get rich selling vaccines? ProPublica asked him this very question and his answer was, well, underwhelming. I don't know, to be clear, if it's an intentional or naturally occurring situation. I have no idea. He has no idea. All he knows for sure is something must be wrong. Conspiracy theorists think of themselves as the victims of organized persecution. For exposing their deadly secrets. 
the minions of Big Pharma waged war on Dr. Mikovits, destroying her good name, career, and personal life. The film further ratchets up the persecuted victimhood, characterizing the entire population as victims of a vast deception, even unwitting accomplices. But they've done such a great job at manipulating the masses that it's other people shutting down other citizens and the big tech platforms follow suit and they shut everything down. Conspiracy theorists also see themselves as brave heroes, taking on the villainous conspirators. Their attempt to silence you has failed. And I, I have to ask, how do you sit here with confidence to call out these great forces and not fear for your life as you leave this building? Because if we don't stop this now, we can not only forget our republic and our freedom, but we can forget humanity because we'll be killed by this agenda. If we can forget humanity, who's going to rake in all those billions of dollars and from who? This is another example of the incoherence of conspiratorial thinking. It's so hard to change a conspiracy theorist's mind because their theories are self-sealing. Even absence of evidence for a theory is evidence for the theory. The reason why there's no evidence for the conspiracy is because the conspirators did such a good job covering it up. He directed the cover-up. And in fact, everybody else was paid off. And paid off big time. Millions of dollars in funding from Tony Fauci. But just because conspiracy theorists are stuck in a self-sealing bubble doesn't mean that you have to be trapped in it too. Conspiracy theorists see patterns everywhere. Their whole thing is about connecting the dots. Random events are reinterpreted as being caused by the conspiracy and woven into a broader interconnected pattern. Any connections are imbued with sinister meaning. $3.7 million flowed from the National Institutes of Health here in the U.S., to the Wuhan lab in China, the same lab where many people have said that this coronavirus infection first originated. We also now know that NIAID, the department associated with the National Institutes of Health, of which Dr. Anthony Fauci is in control, had already been conducting experiments with the Wuhan lab in the past in regard to coronavirus. Never mind that Dr. Fauci has no control over NIH funding which is awarded based on scientific merit. Never mind that only $600,000 flowed to Wuhan, one of many international collaborators, on a project that sought to examine the risk of future viruses emerging from wildlife. Never mind that the project was so successful that its discoveries have been used in the development of the breakthrough antiviral drug Remdesivir. The antidote to conspiratorial thinking is critical thinking. You can help spot and resist conspiracy theories by exposing its tactics. Is the logic contradictory? Is there an overriding suspicion of official explanations? Some nefarious intent? Even if you disprove one element of a conspiracy theory, do they still have the unshaken belief that something must be wrong? Is there a persecuted victim? If there's no evidence for the theory, is that taken as evidence for it? If you provide evidence disproving the conspiracy theory, are they immune to evidence? Do they assume that random events are all part of a bigger pattern? Exposing the techniques of conspiracy theorists is the key to inoculating ourselves and others from being misled, especially when we're most vulnerable in times of crisis and uncertainty.